Good morning, everybody. My name is Morgan Matlock, and I am the Professional Development Coordinator with Central Texas College and the Continuing Education Department. And today I am here to talk to you about some of the healthcare programs that Central Texas College offers. So bear with me for one moment while I get my screen going. Okay. All right. So we are talking about healthcare today. What is the fastest growing industry in the US? Uh, I'm sure you can guess that it's going to be healthcare because that's what we're talking about today. Um, okay. Our healthcare programs are designed to give you a wide variety of skills. There are two kinds of skills to think about when looking at future careers. Hard skills show that you're great for a specific job. Nobody is born with them. And some examples are coding, taking blood, budgeting, mixing drinks, etc. Soft skills prove that you would be a great fit anywhere. They're a part of your personality, but they all are, are also something that you can learn. Some examples of soft school skills include interpersonal skills, communication, and leadership. So the question is, what do you want to be? And what skills do you have that are preparing you for that? And what skills do you need to prepare you for it further? CTC is home to several programs that can help you find a job in the healthcare field. The healthcare field is a vast field that covers different aspects of addressing illnesses, physical and mental trauma, emergency care, as well as care for the weak, elderly, disabled, and children through and children through analysis, administration, record keeping, research, and preventative practices. Please enjoy this video. I can't hear it for some reason. You can't hear it? Nope. Can you make oh, sure okay. you're sharing it correctly? Yes. clinical experience are great. We get to use a lot of our skills at the clinical sites. And if you're ever unsure or just uncertain of something, the professors will help you. Here at Central Texas College Department of Nursing and Allied Health, we have two programs. Uh, we have a associate degree nursing program. Hmm. Last time, guys. The clinical experiences are great. We get to use a lot of our skills at the clinical sites. And if you're ever unsure or just uncertain of something, the professors will help you. Here at Central Texas College Department of Nursing and Allied Health, we have two programs. Uh, we have a associate degree nursing program and a vocational nursing degree program. Both programs are different in the fact that the vocational nurse is a 12 month certificate program and the associate degree nursing program is a, an associate degree. As a licensed vocational nurse and or a, an associate degree nurse, they both will become licensed. They'll take the NCLEX exam, become licensed, and then they'll go ahead and apply for employment at the various uh, clinics, hospitals, and or nursing homes. Okay, so um, that was a quick summary of our nursing program. As a licensed vocational nurse, um, you would take a 12 month program to, to become a licensed vocational nurse. You would take a 12 month certificate program and the average wages for that would be $43,000. And as a registered new nurse, you would have an associate's degree, which is two years plus all the prerequisites and the median wages for a nurse are $71,000. Let's talk about EMTs now. I do really enjoy the chance uh, of diversity of people we get to meet while doing our clinicals and ambulance rotations. Uh, it's fantastic to learn as much as you can in the classroom, but with the opportunity CTC provides you to go and have patient contacts, 
have contacts with other uh, medics, nurses, and doctors. It just gives you an overall range of experience that I think you can't achieve while you're in the classroom. The EMT Basic course allows you to go to school for one semester and obtain your EMT Basic certification, which is the lower level of certification for emergency medical services. The paramedic certification is over 12 months and allows you to practice that advanced level of care as a paramedic in the field. So once you obtain your paramedic certification, you can actually work for ambulance services, you can work for hospitals, you can work within the prison systems or for police departments, you're able to work for private EMS or you're able to work for fire departments all over the country. And the best thing about it is it's actually a national certification so you can stay in the state of Texas or you can travel outside of the state of Texas and go anywhere in the United States. We have so many opportunities, whether that be clinical, lab, our instructors, that we can really ensure that our students are not only successful within the course, that they're gonna have successful long careers in emergency medical services because they're well prepared for everything they're gonna see. So the CTC, um, EMT program is one of only 51 programs for EMT in the state of Texas. Uh, let's see. The emergency medical technician program is a one certificate, one, uh, sorry, I'm having trouble reading today, guys, is a one semester certificate program. And if you are interested in the advanced program, you'll need to take an additional two semesters. The paramedic program is a four semester certificate program. So now let's talk a little bit about mental health services and social work. Um, we have several different opportunities for uh, programs in the mental health services for social work. Um, the CTC Mental Health Service Services Department offers associate's degrees in chemical dependency, at-risk youth, an associate degree in social work specialization, and a certificate of completion in community health work. All the programs can be completed online, affording the students an opportunity to further their education during their busy lives and in or in the classroom. Faculty are not only credentialed ac academically to, are not only credentialed and academically ready to teach, but they bring 75 years of field experience with them. Students completing either program of study can find work in agencies that provide chemical dependency counseling or in the juvenile justice system, residential treatment settings, community-based after-school programs, and in the public school system as teachers and teachers' aides. Completion of social work specialization may be transferable to a four-year school. However, students may still find work in the service areas mentioned above. So at-risk youth specialization is an associate's degree and social work specialization is also an associate's degree. Um, and the social work will get you into entry level employment, uh, employment. You will need to get a bachelor's degree in order to get licensed in social work. Uh, we also have licensed social worker, which is a bachelor's degree. Um, we don't offer that here, but that you can take the prerequisites here to move to a four year university to complete your degree. Now we're gonna talk about medical laboratory technician, which is um, also phlebotomy. I'm currently enrolled in the medical laboratory technician program. My favorite course so far is hematology. Uh, the reason for this is because I'm interested in seeing the cells behind the scenes under the microscope and learning which cells cause which diseases and lack of things like that. The MLT and phlebotomy programs are under the Department of Nursing and Allied Health. Upon completion of the phlebotomy program, our students are eligible to sit for a national registry exam. They are able to be employed as a phlebotomist in various healthcare facilities, drawing patient specimens for testing. For our MLT students, they are eligible upon graduation to sit for the national registry exam for which we currently have a 100% pass rate for the history of the program. That allows them to work in various hospital laboratories, research laboratories upon completion of the program. So the most basic definition of phlebotomy is the collection of blood from patients, but phlebotomy is much more than that. 
Correct specimen collection is essential to good diagnoses and treatment. Without a phlebotomist to ensure doctors need to treat patients can be missed. Hospitals, diagnostic laboratories, blood donor centers, and other locations will need phlebotomists to perform good work. A phlebotomist serves patients by identifying the best method for retrieving specimens, preparing specimens for laboratory testing, and performing screening procedures. Research has shown that at least 70% of all medical decisions rely on laboratory data. As a laboratory professional, you will play a huge role in this process. CTC's Medical Lab Technician MLT program is NAACLS accredited, which means you can transfer your credits to any other NAACLS program if you've ever had to move. We have a 100% higher rate upon graduation for students staying in Central Texas, as well as a 100% pass rate for the ASCP Board of Certification exam. MLT classes cover a variety of subjects from introduction to clinical laboratory science, clinical chemistry, clinical microbiology, hematology, urinalysis, immuno immunology, molecular parasitology, transfusion services, as well as 760 clinical hours, which will help our students master the field of clinical laboratory science. So as a medical lab technician, you'll need an associate's degree and you can make a little over $30,000 starting um, in a median, your median earnings. And as a phlebotomist, um, that is a certificate program I believe it's a one semester certificate program and you can start out making $20,000 there. Now we're gonna talk about histology. This is histotechnology and my favorite course is histotechnology one because I get to use um, the equipment that I'm gonna be using um, in my real life job. This program is perfect for students who are interested in going into medicine or science, who want to work in research or who want to work in healthcare. A histotechnician will take, process, and create slides from biopsy specimens and tissues for medical or research analysis. With a degree in histotechnology, you can get a national certification and work in hospitals, research facilities, and laboratories all over the country. There are very few programs like this and there are only three or four programs within the entire state. I've received a lot of support and encouragement from local facilities and hospitals and research institutions. They've been very eager to see where our graduates go and what they can accomplish with this degree. So a histology laboratory technician is the study of microscopic anatomy of cells and tissues. Histology is an essential tool of biology and medicine since accurate diagnosis of cancer and other diseases usually requires histopathological examination of samples. Successful clinical laboratory students should have a strong interest in science, anatomy and physiology, and genetics, and excel as tasks require attention to detail and problem-solving capacity. Hist histologic laboratory technician classes cover a variety of subjects, including the introduction to histology, Histotechnology 1, 2, and 3, and his and functional histology 1 and 2, and several others. There's also a 760-hour clinical, which will help our students master the field of histology. And now we're going to talk about medical administrative support, billing and coding. The program is special to me because it's flexible. I have things to do as far as a working mom, you have uh, single moms, you have people that just have a career and they're unable to go to classes during conventional class time. So it offers us the opportunity to come at, at when we can. So we have uh, two different sides. We have the medical office technology side and then we have the medical billing and coding side. So the medical office technology side uh, more is specialized in teaching students how to do office work in a medical environment. So how to be uh, you know, a unit clerk at a hospital or um, maybe the uh, you know, office administrator in a, in a family clinic office. Uh, the medical billing side, we teach students how to, to review medical records, analyze them for completeness, and submit the appropriate paperwork for insurance companies for billing. We offer an associate's degree. We offer, uh, it's an AAS. Uh, Associate of Applied Science. Then we also have stackable certificates. What that means is that you start in the certificate and you complete those classes and then you earn a certificate of completion and that works towards the next certificate which also uh, works towards the associate's degree. So 
you come in and you start at the lowest certificate and then you work your way up and then you get to that associate's degree. And so along the way, you're able to, to earn uh, something to show for your work and it helps fill out your resume. Okay, so one thing to consider when you're going into the healthcare field is do you wanna be um, working specifically and closely with the patients or do you wanna be more behind the scenes and do the admin? Um, does blood make you queasy? Maybe you should consider a career in medical support or coding and billing um, if you're not interested in working directly with the patients in the working um, specifically like with blood and all that kind of stuff. Um, medical coding is at its most basic, a little bit like translation. It's the coder's job to take something that's written one way, a doctor's diagnosis, for example, or a prescription for a certain medication, and translate it as accurately as possible into a numeric or alphanumeric code. For injury, diagnosis, medical procedure, there's a co corresponding code. Medical bill take the information from the medical coder and make a bill for the insurance company called a claim. Medical administrative support professional provides all the background administrative function support that makes the clinic or hospital ward run smoothly. There are several different careers that you can take within this field, medical billing and coding specialist, medical office administrative support, medical documentation specialist, and all three of these programs have a very similar medium earning and they all require an associate's degree. Medical billing and coding also requires a certification. You could also, also be a hospital ward clerk um, or a medical records clerk. All of these fall under the same type of support. Now we're going to talk about uh, fitness and wellness. The faculty is well-rounded. They're very versatile when it comes to dealing with the students and the different demands that the students need. They're also very knowledgeable in the information that they're instructing. Also enjoy the facilities. The facilities are very great when it comes to applying the knowledge that you learn in class. They have a full functional gym as well as swimming pool, basketball courts, all the things that you need to apply everything that you learn in class. We offer an associate's degree in kinesiology. Uh, within that, we have the degree itself. Of course, with an associate's degree, it's a great transition to a bachelor's degree uh, so that you can then go into exercise physiology and a few different dimensions uh, within kinesiology. Uh, with just the associates, if one wanted to work uh, immediately, we can go into physical therapy, personal training, perhaps even athletic training. So there's quite a few opportunities. And we also have some certificates that are offered. Currently, we have a first aid certificate, and then we also have a personal training certificate. In the kinesiology department, we really have two separate uh, components of it. We have lecture classes and activities. Uh, so for example, in the lecture area, we could take first aid, health, another class called concepts, uh, which is a personal training style class. And we also offer the activity classes, uh, anything from swimming, Muay Thai, spin bike, uh, so various activity, lifetime sports type classes that we also offer. We, we love working with the students. Uh, we love our job. Uh, we have a passion for teaching. We really do care about the industry. And uh, we look forward to having as many students as we can uh, going through our program and making an impact in the world. The kinesiology department prepares students for many career options by equipping students with the academic knowledge and practical experience necessary to work in a variety of recreational and fitness settings. Students interested in working in a movement environment such as athletics, physical education, athletic training, fitness and personal training would enjoy the kinesiology major. A degree in public health, nutrition, exercise science or health and wellness can provide practical skills and hands on training needed to land a career in corporate wellness. Morgan, we've had some questions about MLT, and we have uh, Professor Robbins here. Um, so when you're done with this, can we kind of address some of those, please? Yeah, let's just, you want to just take a break right now and go through them? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, okay. Professor Robbins, can you? Yes. Um, okay, you're there. I just want to make sure we can hear you. Oh, this okay. is that we have a few questions. Let me go back. Uh, one of them was, is MLT going to be solely online? They are listed as a blended class. Um, they are trying to limit um, 
interaction physically due to the COVID, you know, the COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, pandemic. So uh, most of it will be remotely, yes. But there will be times they'll have to come in uh, and that's at the, the professor's discretion. Okay. And then let's see, the other thing is, are there any prerequisites for MLT and how long is the program? Uh, it is a two year program for the associate's degree. Um, the students that have already attended the orientation, they would have received a uh, course advisory form and it gives them the breakdown as far as what is, uh, we are a cohort program, so they have a specific plan that they have to go through as far as in the order of what they take the core classes in. Uh, so the um, course advisor, let me just bring that up real quick. Uh, it's going to have uh, the intro class first for the first semester, um, the immunology, serology. Um, you have to take those prior uh, before you take uh, like um, immunohematology, which is blood bank or general chemistry. Uh, so they, they kind of put it in order already for them. Like for example, general chemistry in the second semester is a prerequisite for the clinical. So you can't really take that unless uh, the director gives permission to be able to take it out of order, which sometimes they do that. But um, they usually give us the direction as far as what they want that course outline to be. Um, and some of them, yeah, there is pro prerequisites for the program, but uh, those students that did already go through orientation, they have that form and they would have signed it and any potential students will get that same form before they enter into the program. Okay, um, I'm trying to see. Um, because I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Okay. Uh, I do have some questions that may, I don't know if you can, if you can answer either one of you, but you know, if you're working in the ISDs uh, in general, you know, do you need a teaching certificate? Is the associates enough or maybe at youth risk to work? You know, how more or less with the ISDs, how that does that work? Does anybody know? I have an idea. Um, if you were going to work directly with students in most positions for working in an ISD, you do have to have a teacher certificate. Um, if you are not going to work directly with teaching the students, then you don't necessarily need one. So a lot of the admin positions that are at the college for, let's say, counseling or something like that, they do require you to have a teaching certificate or years of experience in teaching. But each position is going to be different. So there will be some positions that you don't need it for. But if you're teaching students, you do. It's the general rule. Thank you. Because that's. Um... And can you. Uh... And I, I guess there's a little bit more questions as to how some of the virtual training is going to happen. Um, can you kind of discuss maybe. Uh... Professor Robbins a little bit. I know that you're specifically to MLT, but I don't know if you're familiar with nursing and how they're doing it as well, or if they're if you're familiar with how the kind of the gamut of it works. Or Morgan, I mean, either I, I am familiar with it. Um, so what's going to happen is almost all of the programs, at least for this fall, are going to be either online or live online. Um, if they're online, you're going to have assignments that you do that probably have due dates and that sort of thing, but you're going to do it on your own. You're going to participate in discretion boards and stuff like that. And then the live online, there are going to be some classes where, or maybe certain days of the week, something like that, where instructors get online. You all get on kind of like what we're doing right now, a WebEx, or but you do it on Blackboard and you have a class where the teacher teaches and you're able to ask questions. And then the third component to how we're handling the majority of our medical classes is everything that can be done online will be done online, but we all know that you need to have some hands on skills training. And so how we're handling that is we're allowing a small amount of students to come into the classroom um, each day that the teacher sets up for a hands on lab. And then you do your lab, you sanitize the rooms will be sanitized before you go in. You'll sanitize your own space before you leave. And um, then a different group of students will come in. So we'll only have 
most of the groups, depending on it depends on size, but a lot of the classrooms are limited to eight at this time for the hands on skills. And basically teachers will say, hey, here's, here's the days we're going to do hands on skills. Sign up for the days that you can make it. And then everybody just needs to make sure that they get their turn going on those hands on. All right, thank you. I have had quite a few other questions come in. Let's see. Um, one of the main things was, do I still need to buy scrubs? If most of it's going to be online. Yes, because you're going to be coming into the labs for hands on class. And if you plan on attending clinical or internship or externship. You're going to need to have the scrubs and all the equipment, which includes. Um, you know, that stuff. I'm having a blank on the name of that stethoscope. Yeah, did you see me doing the motion? I did. Picture. Yeah, the stethoscope and all that kind of stuff. You still need to have your your materials for class. Okay, great. Um, do you have a ballpark figure on how many nursing students from CDC eventually go for their bachelor somewhere else? I do not know the answer to that question. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's something that normally uh, the department chair of the nursing department is the one that kind of keeps mostly track of stuff like that, if at all. So that would be something. Her name is Tam Sam Rippa. And if we, you know, we can always get you her email if you really, really feel like you need to have that answer. Um, what about EMT? What if I have the FIDS app? At account, but my old school is on my ACCT. Okay, so I'm not really sure how that works. Um, I'm not available to access the book at the bookstore right now. Would I be able to get the book somewhere else or do you recommend that I get it from the bookstore? We require that students buy books at the bookstore. Um, if you can't find it in our bookstore, what I would suggest is we connect you to the um, program manager for EMT, which is uh, Julie Jordan, and she can help you with any issues that you're having. And her email, I'm going to type it into chat. Or you can also get a hold of the clerk for the EMS as well, Miss Lacey Moore, and she can possibly answer that too as well. I want to say that you have, to, if you're not buying materials from our bookstores, you really need to be really careful um, because some sometimes we have materials that have been created specifically for us and even uh, books that have the same title, but they have different ISB numbers and different, um, the way that the chapters are put together and all of that are created specifically for Central Texas College. So be very, very careful with purchasing things outside of our bookstore. Um, and I would recommend that before you purchase it, you kind of run it by your professor or somebody from the department. Um, I also have not been able to access the videos on the handbooks as well. Okay, um, Ebony, I can't remember what program you're, is it LVN that you're in? I can't remember what program you're in. Um, P. Is this from Ebony? Yes, you need PPE. You will need personal protective equipment. We are allowed to change our major when we start and me either. Okay, so nobody can get this handbook. Um, whatever this handbook is, so. Uh, can somebody clarify what the handbook is? Um, do you have to take the HESI exam for MLT? No. no, just tune in. I'll be in the phlebotomy program. Did we go over anything about that? Not really yet, right? We went over phlebotomy. Oh, we yeah. did. Sorry. Oh, we Sorry, did. I wasn't here for that. <laughs> uh, will the bookstore open before classes start or do we have to order them online? Uh, you should order everything online as much as possible. Um, but I don't know if they're going to be opening up anytime. Does anybody know? I haven't heard anything about that. Okay, yeah, so I would recommend ordering online and then we go from mm -hmm. there. Oh, it's for the EMT program. There's some sort of handbook, I guess, that you can't get a hold of. Definitely email, uh, I guess, Julie E. Jordan, and that they did post somebody. Um, I think Morgan posted her email there. And, and also Moore. Lacey Moore's email. You can contact them and ask for guidance on that handbook. Okay. Uh, we are about to start medical encoding and billing. Okay. 
So I just want to make before we keep going, I wanted to kind of clarify some of the programs we've already discussed because obviously there was a lot of questions. So I think is that the next one medical encoding? No, uh, massage therapy is the next one. I just went okay. back to phlebotomy and MLT because that's what we were talking about. Okay, so yes, we've gone over medical coding and billing. Um, but if you have specific questions, please go ahead and type them in and we'll do what we can to answer. All right, so I'm we're up to date on questions. I'm going to let you kind of roll. I just didn't want to. No, definitely. That's a good idea. Thanks for letting me know a couple more come in and you want to pause me periodically. Just do it. Okay, thanks. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is licensed massage and I'm going to introduce it with a video and then we'll talk about it a little bit more. What makes the CTC massage program special is the fact that it's very affordable. Um, the classroom is very small, so you get that one-on-one -on -one, um, feedback from your instructor. If you're having some difficulty in a particular class, you have the opportunity to go to the instructor and they give you that personalized attention. Massage therapy is a licensed healthcare profession regulated by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Upon successful completion of the basic licensure program, students after their clinicals and internship sit for the Massage and Body Work Licensing Exam, commonly referred to as the MBLEX. Once the students have successfully completed the MBLEX, they can apply for their state license. So once the students graduate and become licensed massage therapists, they can go to work in spas, chiropractic offices, wellness centers, fitness centers. They can go to work on cruise ships, in hospitals, for resort and hotel chains. They can even specialize in animal massage and go to work for veterinary clinics and pet spas. A career in massage therapy gives you freedom and flexibility. Massage therapists work through all stages of life from prenatal and infant massage to geriatric and hospice massage and even animal massage. Massage therapy is found in many healthcare settings. At CTC, a dedicated team of licensed massage therapy instructors representing more than 60 years of massage therapy experience brings students a broad spectrum of understanding of the massage profession and strong basic skills. In addition to the basic skills of massage therapy, instructors emphasize massage therapy in a healthcare setting, such as chiropractic, hospital, and behavioral health. Students learn mindfulness, mind-body skills, and self-care techniques to prepare them for a career as a massage therapist. Once licensed, graduates return to take continuing education requirements and further their knowledge and skills. So right now, the massage therapy therapy program is transitioning from a non-credit certificate program to a four credit program. Um, at this time, we are not offering classes, but we plan to start offering the classes again in spring 2021 as a credit program. So that's in transition and a period of growth right now. Now we're gonna talk about clinical medical assistance. As a clinical medical assistant, the student will be trained to help physicians carry out procedures, care for patients, perform basic lab tests, and administer medications. The clinical medical assistant works in a physician's office or in a clinic setting. A clinical medical assistant um, will make approximately $31,000 a year um, in the median rate of pay. <laughs> um, it's a non-credit program. It is five months long. Right now, we are offering it Monday through Thursday, either 5 to 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, the classes are partially online, partially face-to-face -face with hands-on uh, labs, but it's all of the lectures online and all of the labs are in the classroom. We also have the Certified Nurse Aid Program, which is actually also moving to the nursing department in the spring of 2021. Um, A certified nursing assistant or CNA helps patients and with activities of daily living and other healthcare needs under the direct supervision of a registered nurse or a licensed practical nurse. 
Certified nurse aides are also common referred, commonly referred to as a nursing assistant, a patient care assistant, or a nurse's aide. A certified uh, nursing assistant is a non credit certificate program, which is five weeks, but it's going, as I said, to go to the nursing department. It's going to become a credit program. The median earnings for a nursing assistant are approximately 26,000 and approximately 22,000 for a home health aide. A home health aide is someone who goes into a person's home and assists them with their daily living activities. We also have the certified veterinary assistant program. Um, as a veterinary assistant, you will help a veterinarian or the veterinarian technician in their daily tasks. Students will learn to feed and give water to pets, examine them for signs of illness, disease or injury, clean and disinfect cages and work areas, as well as sterilize laboratory and surgical equipment in laboratories, animal hospitals and clinics. Um, at this time, we actually have split our veterinary assistant program into two programs and we are setting up the second program right now. The first one is 35 hours and you'll get all the basics that I just talked about and the second program 120 hours. So it's going to be significantly longer, but it's going to have a much more in depth. Um, process for education and hands on labs and then after you take those 2 classes, if you want to, you can take the certification exam through the Texas medical veterinary association and you will become a certified veterinary assistant. Uh, another program that we offer through continuing education is the pharmacy technician program. As a pharmacy technician, you will help the pharmacist package or mix prescriptions, maintain client records, refer clients to pharmacists for counseling, assist with inventory control and purchasing, as well as collect payment and coordinate billing. The pharmacy technician course is 200 hours of accelerated classroom training with an emphasis on skills mastery through hands on practice and supervision. This class is also currently offered with um, the lecture being online, partially online, partially live online, and then hands on labs that are conducted in the classroom so that you can get practice dealing with the hands on aspect of being a pharmacy technician. A pharmacy technician is a non credit certificate program. It lasts 6 months. It's on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 9 PM. And we have programs starting about every 2 to 3 months. The average pharmacy technician makes about $30,000 a year. And I will say that if you are interested in healthcare, but you don't want to work directly with patients like a nurse or a medical assistant, a pharmacy technician is a great administrative position to go into similar to medical billing and coding. I will also say that you're going to be on your feet basically all day as a pharmacy technician. So make sure you're ready to do that if you pursue that career. Uh, now we're going to go through the contact information. I'm just going to slowly scroll through for each of the departments um, while while you close out what you have to say, Marcelli. Yes, I have. I just have more a few more questions come in. Uh, right. Let's see here. For phlebotomy, when will they be able to get a full class schedule? Uh, well, the phlebotomy is for 16 weeks. Um, it just has the uh, le uh, the lab and lecture and then the clinicals that you sign up for in the fall is when the the new semester will begin. The other classes are uh, co-requisites and those the student would register for those on their own. Uh, so if they want to take them all in one uh, semester, they can, but um, that would be at their discretion. If they want to do part-time or full-time, um, they can do that. Yes. Okay. Um, let me see. I have. Um, so to let everybody know, I did verify with the bookstore and they said everything must be purchased online. Nobody can walk in as of right now until further notice. Um, We've had some questions answered. Um, uh, after EMT is done, will I be able to move on to the fire academy? And do you offer that at CTC? I know we don't have a fire academy here in Colleen, um, but are you familiar with the EMT and the fire academy? 
Barbie at all? Any chance? You're muted. Okay, no. Sorry, I was on a phone call. What did you say? Are you familiar with the Fire Academy and EMT and how that works or not really? No, I'm sorry. Usually just, um, it's been my experience with like Police Academy and Fire Academy and all of that, that the if you get hired on to be a firefighter, for example, most of the time, not all of the time, but they will actually send you to a fire academy or a police academy. Uh, if they have one, they will send you to their own. If not, like, for example, we have a police academy. A lot of the smaller departments in the local area will send uh, any re new recruits that require an account that need an academy. Uh, they'll send them to us. Unfortunately, as of right now, we do not have a fire academy here in Colleen. Um, we only have fire protect fire services overseas, not uh, for military contracts, unfortunately, not in Colleen or in Texas. Um, so if you see that in our catalog or something like that, that's why we have it because it's overseas. Um, but yeah, usually what will happen is depending on even, you know, a fire department, um, they will give you the training that you need and they will tell you where you need to go. Uh, but if you already have EMT, then that would be something less that they have to worry about and you could be on the job more quickly. Just like there are, you know, if you want to go up in the ramps ranks of uh, firefighting, you know, fire, being a firefighter, eventually a lot of them will, uh, the fire department will send you to the police academy so that you can be like an investigator for fire and all of that. There, there's, it's a lot more complicated and this is where those stackable things. Those of you that have been on some of the other trainings that we've done today, we keep talking about stackable. That's how that works. You know, um, even somebody else had mentioned here somewhere, you know, can you be an RN and then go in, go back and be a paramedic. In my experience, most people start as a paramedic and then go into be an, a nurse or RN, but somebody wrote here, uh, which was really kind of cool that uh, to become a helicopter um, to be able to do things in a helicopter, they have to go back and get that paramedic training, which I didn't know about. So that was kind of cool. Um, I, I have okay. a comment on the EMT. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I have a comment on the EMT. I see a question Please. that says, can you hear me? Um, do you need a certification in EMT to become a paramedic? I don't know if you need the certification, but I did look up the course lists really quick. And on the paramedic course list, the EMT course courses are there. So you do complete those courses to get a paramedic sort of, um, program completion. And then I have here, does the college still do a bridge for paramedic to RN? And I wanna say that there is something, but I'm yes. not 100% sure. There is. I think uh, it is the, uh, they do the LVN to RN bridge, which is also the same as the paramedic to RN. It's okay. the, the um, articulation program. Yes. Um, any contact info for risk youth degrees? So that would be what, like Dr. Henry? Yeah, that's Dr. Henry. Um, it would be rhenry at ctcd.edu. I did include it in the comments earlier because somebody did have questions. Um, if we're unable to get admitted into histology program this semester, what courses would you recommend to fill in for the meantime? Already have the algebra, English, sociology, philosophy required and registered for anatomy and physiology this semester. Okay, so yeah, the any classes that do not say H lab in the course description, which I can always email a copy of that. Um, it is, it would be the, the college algebra AMP one, uh, humanities, fine arts, um, AMP two. Let's see, uh, general chemistry, um, composition one, and of course these uh, general psychology or sociology. Um, I can also put that in the comments if you'd like as well. Yes, please. Okay. Um, I have another question. I have a learning disability and I have trouble testing. Would I be able to get a tutor in my program if I'm having trouble? That's actually a two answer. There's two answers to that. Um, 
We actually, if you need any special assistance, you need to register through the disability support services to receive any accommodations that may be required. Um, I do recommend that you contact them as quickly as possible. There is some paperwork that they will require and I will post um, their website in a little bit because that has a lot of information as to what paperwork is going to be needed and how to contact that. Um, we have one of their disability coordinators is Ron Porter and Morgan went ahead and included his information in there. You're welcome to contact him. But in the disability support services, it explains in detail all the paperwork that they require and all the things that are going to be necessary. Um, they will then look and see at the college level because in and, and to to be fair at the college level is very different from high school or, or you know, pre K to um, to high school. It's very different and, and the, the way that it works is very different and accommodations are different. So it's really important that you talk to somebody and uh, submit any documentation that they require so that we can uh, give you the best options possible. Now, in terms of tutoring, we have an academic studio and they do offer tutoring. It's virtual and by appointment as of right now. Um, you're welcome to contact them. And I know for a fact that there's been a lot of nursing and um, there's been a lot of nursing students and, you know, like all the programs, the different programs, then you can go, especially uh, most of you will have to take some version of anatomy and physiology. You know, you can get, you can start a, a study group and, and you can actually get some of that stuff. Um, thank you, Morgan, for putting the academic studio link in there. Just so that you know, if you had an IEP in high school, it's fine, but the IEP is not probably going to be accepted. You're going to need the medical documentation. Um, for disability support services. So that's why it's really important that you actually talk to them. Is there a dental program or anything close for students attending? CTC does not have a dental program as far as I know of any kind. Uh, we, we have medical and uh, Morgan has more info on that. Uh, we don't have a face to face dental program, but we do have an online certification program which is self-paced if you're interested in doing that. And it actually includes the voucher so you can take the exam when you're done. The closest dental program in the area, if you really need a face-to-face -face one, I believe is Temple College. If it's not Temple, it's Waco. Let's see the, <clears throat> okay. Randall has a lot of information and he's been helping answer a lot of these questions. So let's see. The governing board of EMT and paramedic is National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians. There's three levels, EMT basic, EMT, oops, wrong way. EMT advances, which is most being phased out and paramedic. You need your EMT to become a paramedic. I work locally and I am an EMT and paramedic preceptor. So I'm always willing to help out. Thank you. You have been answering a lot of the questions that have to do with paramedics. So I appreciate you um, helping in the chat. Um, I don't know when the bookstore will have scrubs. Usually they have some in stock. I just don't know if they'll have it. And financial aid usually is open 10 days prior to the first day of class. And that's how you can pay for materials and books if you need to. Uh, and then I was told there's even some classes I can take in Fort Hood for physical therapy. Is that true? I have never heard of that. Anybody? I haven't heard specifically about physical therapy on Fort Hood, but I do know there are some classes on Fort Hood. To my knowledge, they are not healthcare related. Um, they're more like taking algebra and some of those non science. Mm -hmm non healthcare type classes, but it is possible that they do through a different uh, college, but I don't believe it's us. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and it's probably, yeah, prerequisites definitely, because to become a physical therapist at this point, you, I heard you actually might need to even go up to a master's degree or, or a doctorate. So it's really, really important that you take, you know, you can take a lot of prerequisites either in Fort Hood, online, here, um, but physical therapy, I can tell you right now, you're definitely going to need to take all the, you know, anatomy and physiology and a lot of the same uh, things that you would get for nursing and paramedic, or well, mostly nursing, and 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 some more. So um, we don't offer physical therapy per se. So you might want to check with the university that offers the program and see what their prerequisites are. 
but I do, I have had like a student that used to, that was interested in physical therapy and took some classes, uh, the core here and then transferred over to do that. Morgan, do you have more? I did. I was just going to say that um, a really great co-program for physical therapy, if you're really interested in sticking with Central Texas College, is massage therapy. They go together very, very well. So it might be something for you to look into, and they may have some of the prerequisites that you're looking for as well. Um, I'm not sure what time they're meeting for LVN. I'm not sure what that means. It depends on the per on the classes. Um, and that's really specific to the department, so I'm not sure that we're going to be able to answer that, but you can definitely contact a department and once you're basically admitted, they'll get you all that information. Um, they offer psychology classes on Fort Hood, yes, which is a prerequisite for healthcare. Yes, that is one of the options. Um, somebody mentioned taking classes for prerequisites with CTC and then going to Mary Harden Baylor. Definitely, we're much cheaper. Your, you know, your pocket will appreciate it. I will tell you that. Um, we have, you know, it, it's, it's, it makes a lot of sense to take a lot of our, you know, the, as much as possible with us and then move on to any college or university that, you know, if you want to do a 4 year, heck, yeah, go for it. Um, but it does make a lot of sense to start with us. Oh. Uh, all right, I don't know. Do you have anything else Morgan? Because I kind of took over. No, okay, no, I but I don't mind helping answer questions. When can we get ID cards? You can get ID cards now with a, an appointment. So the ID cards, let me type it in because I had this question already. ID cards at ctcd.edu. You can email them and you can make an appointment to get your ID card. Um, I know that a lot of the medical, the students that are taking this field will need that information. Uh, we'll need to get your person and in person advisor. You can make an appointment. That's the only way you're going to be able to see a, an academic advisor. But what kind of advisor do you need? Because I want to make sure that we get you the correct type. Do you just need academic or do you need to talk to somebody in the department? Council. Uh, Okay, yes, so to do that, you can, okay, to talk to an academic advisor for TSI testing, you can do that by um, you need, you can email them at academic. Advisor at ctcd.edu. You can also go to their website and they have a chat option and you can get answers right away that way, or you can make an appointment by emailing them and they will let you know when you can come in, but do not come in without an appointment. First day of classes in phlebotomy, will we need to be in scrubs? The answer is yes. yes. Anytime you yes. come into classes, right, Morgan? Yes. And Barbie, yes. yes. I All see a lot of classes or scrubs. Um, okay, Gabriel, you're ready for the 12th of August. That's fine. That's perfect. Um, for an advisor, um, the sooner you get, you talk to an advisor, the better. We're kind of getting to that point where, you know, it, a lot of people are going to try to do things at last minute. I mean, if you can make it, if you can get it done before last minute, that's much better. Uh, I don't see any more questions. I don't know if I have missed any. I think I'm up to date, but if I miss anything, please let me know guys, because you were throwing them out and they were great. Um, uh, those have been really good questions. There's been, mm -hmm. I'm kind of happy, um, that we're able to help y'all figure this stuff out. I know it's not always easy, but we're getting it done. Um, the next presentation, oh, how long does it take to allocate funds to the fall semester if it was applied to the wrong so, ooh. Okay. How long is it, okay, that depends on where the mistake went wrong. 
um, where the, uh, to allocate funds for to the fall semester if it was applied to the wrong semester. Um, it, it, the thing about it is, I think it, it depends because in the fall we have a brand new school year and funding year. So I'm a little bit worried you might need to contact financial aid for that. But if it was an al once we received the funds for fall, if somehow it went wrong, then it might be the business office. But I think you need to talk to financial aid first and make sure that you did your financial aid correctly. Um, because I'm not really sure what happened there. Yeah, see, it went to spring semester of this year. That is a completely different year. So you have financial aid starts. It has a, it, it follows its own year, just like the college follows its own year. So financial aid the, for the ye year starts in the in the fall and then it ends in summer. So if you have money that was put into spring, you might need to fill out the FAFSA application for the fall for the 2020 2021 year, not the other one. So you need to make sure you have that right. Um, let me see. I saw I'm missing. It was a scholarship. Oh, okay. Was it a CTC scholarship? Can you just nod your head? Yes or no? No, it was a different one. Yeah, so you might need to talk to financial aid or the that might be either financial aid or the business department. Um, because that's that's different. Um, when the email academic advisor. Wait. I missed something. When emailing, will they select an advisor that has the most information for your program or is it a general advisor? Um, you, you, all advi all advisors, academic advisors, they can advise on all programs. However, you can also talk to a, a, a faculty advisor, and that is based on the program that you choose. And you get one assigned to you once you register for your classes the first time. Morgan, come back. <laughs> all right, so we're almost at time. Morgan, anything else you want to add in before we end the session? Because this has been great. Uh, nothing else, just that I'm going to put my email in here in case anybody has any questions that they can email me afterwards um, if they think of anything. Um, here, happy to help. Just let me know. How do you know you who's assigned to them? You will get an email who your faculty advisor is uh usually that first week of class or right before classes begin uh thank you guys thank you morgan for bearing with me thank you barbie for coming in and helping answer some of these questions will you get a school schedule online at blackboard or in person the school schedule will show up in web advisor more for more phlebotomy mlt and histology information oh yeah that's barbie okay never mind <laughs> I was like, oh. all right, thank you. Thank you guys. I really appreciate the time. You have had some excellent questions. Um, my email, I'll put it again down at the end, but you're welcome to email me if you have any questions um, and we will go ahead and do whatever we can to help you. We, I can tell you right now, all three of us that are here that have been speaking, we really, really care about our students and we will go out of our way to help you out. So please feel free to contact me, Morgan or Barbie. We, if we don't have the answer, we will look for an answer for you. So, or at least get you somebody that knows the answer. Um, this has been great. I hope you guys are doing well. The next one, uh, the next program is gonna be the STEM program. It starts at 1230. You're welcome to come join us if you'd like. Um, this, has a, this is also going to have a lot of good information and it might be really good for a lot of you since it's going to include science. And all of you are going to need to take those anatomies and anatomy and <laughs> physiology, chemistries and all those ologies that are going to go in there. You pretty much most of the people that go through healthcare should uh, go into this program. We're going to have the part one of the code department chairs of the science department participating. If you want to participate, let me get you that. I'm going to uh, 
put in here real quick the link so that you guys can participate. Let me see if you can see or dot me or uh, NSO. You guys, um, please come join us on the other um, on the next one. We'll be there in about half an hour. Thank you very much for everything. Um, again, please join us because if you have to take any of those ologies, you're going to want to hear this next presentation as well. All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. And you have a great day.